Are you looking for some of that quality outdoor decor? But you got no freaking idea where to go? Oh, come on over to Samurai Aquatics and Decor for all your outdoor decor needs. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Yeah, just delete that. I'm still not ready, sorry. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Well, maybe some kind of crappy ramshackle building that, I don't know, needs a bit of extra spunk to it or something. And stop mucking about and get yourself over to Samurai Aquatics Discord to see all our available stock. We've got loads of different decor to spend your pretend money on. We've got saunas to fire you up and ice baths to chew you the fudge out. Literally stock coming out of our ears. Grills, swings, seating and more. So much more. And if we don't got it, give us a buzz and we can probably make it. Get yourself on over to Samurai Aquatics at 30 Aqua Vista Way in Midtown Terrace, San Francisco, Ligeti Split, and gorge yourself on outdoor decor. Established in April 2021, Upland Development United is the oldest and most exclusive and transparent node development collaborative in the Upland Metaverse. Contact more choose Ben68 for more information. Warning, this podcast is produced by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment. It contains unsolicited and heavily biased opinions which are solely the views of the individuals involved. It does not include investment advice of any kind and you are responsible for undertaking your own financial, including tax liability research relevant to your own individual circumstances. Damn, I missed it. Oh, well. G'day and welcome to the UDU Podcast YouTube number 70. I'm Ben68. Today it's either Tuesday the 4th or Wednesday the 5th of October, depending on where you're at. And unlike last week, this might be a short show today because um, I was absolutely bloody smashed at work yesterday and had bugger all prepared. So we'll be leaning heavily into the additional segments that have recently become part of our weekly get-together in the Breaking Badly news block. In saying that, though, I did have a couple of brain farts after waking up at the early AMs this morning. So we'll try and run with the How to UDU segment for this week as a quick look into our membership NFTs. For the How to Upland segment, we'll dive into the undermint madness of city releases these days. And there's no Metaverse spotlight planned for today, but we'll see how it all evolves once we kick off. Of course, we'll touch on some Upland Development United updates, get up to speed with what's been happening in the MBE and Samurai Aquatics and we'll just kind of wing it from there, leading up to the giveaways for the weekly challenge and, of course, roll the 1 million Apex wheels. If you are watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify and wondering how you yourself can get involved live with your very biased opinions and your own chance at the 1 million Apex wheels, we drop the link to the Zoom within the Metaverse Ventures Entertainment server each and every Tuesday at about 6.15 p.m. UTC time. Link is in the description. How are you doing this morning, Cheese? And who have we got in with us today? A lot of people. I don't know. There's a lot of them. <laughs> well, you want me to name them? All right. <clears throat> We're chicken winging this, right? Yep. Upland Puppet, <laughs> Vinsky, my girl Zoe, Slav, Space Wrangler Joe, or just Joe Lives, NFT Architect, Detect, Shaftelin, Dak, Rob, someone named Podcast. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. That's fun. <laughs> Your cheese was bad. Umbrella Boy, Ablando, and Casacha. Nice. All right. Um, we'll do the we'll do the market Sasha. stuff first. I'll blitz through that, and then we'll head over to our segments. Zoe, now. grab my chicken wing. You're right. Let's go on with the chicken wing. It's been all I happening in the pre-show. All right. I'm assuming that's come up for everybody. Oh, he's ignoring me. <laughs> no, I did say. So. You're ignoring me. <laughs> Never. So it looks like um, this week, there's a bit of movement in the old markets. So last week, the global crypto market cap was 930 billion, and we've bumped up 3% to 956 billion. So 
that's kind of cool. Um, Bitcoin dominance is creeping up there now at 39.9%, which is nice. Um, in the actual markets that we look at, it's still pretty steady. I mean, geez, 5%, <laughs> Bitcoin's up 5%, still are in that 19 to now it's almost 20K range. Ethereum's up 1%, still in the 1,300s. Wax has had a little boost. Um, engine's down a tiny bit, 2%, down to 45 cents. Ripple's up 6%, 47 cents. Not a lot happening except the ones we look at. Polygon's Polygon. had the biggest boost. Yeah, up 12%. Yeah. Well, 73 cents up to 83 cents. So that's nice and juicy. Cardano down a touch. Ada was 44 cents last week, down to 43 cents. And pretty flat everywhere else, which is very nice. Yes. It's an ass. And we did get a, a bit of feedback through the week um, on both Discord and Twitter in regards to some of the market stuff that we touch on. So thank you for that. Um, we are looking to improve it. Um, and I didn't get a chance to do and put any of the feedback into operations for this week, but we'll look at improving this a little bit. Like we don't try and go too in depth on things. It's just a kind of general overview of where we're at. Um, we don't claim to be experts on any of this stuff. So bear with us. Um, I was kind of surprised that the 90 day average didn't spike more with the release of two cities. So last week, the transaction volume was 71.2 million, up, X, up 2% this week to 72.9. That is the longer time frame though. So changes do take a while to show up. And the trading volumes up 1% was 3,981 last week up to 4,000. So not a real lot of movement there. Um, compared to some other times when I think Rio, there was a, a decent spike there. In the cities, wow, it's all over the shop. <coughs> Anybody want to have a crack at that? Uh, San Francisco is up, UPX up, USD down. Manhattan's UPX up, USD down. <laughs> Chicago yeah. is zero, USD down. LA is up, UPX, USD zero. Bronx is unchanged upx and usd down and rio is just upx down it's all over the place isn't it um it really is i mean we just had a city release though so yeah. upx's are up some of them are yeah now some of these i did get i think it was finsky give me the heads up that some of these prices that we're saying for the floor they're they're people that are jailed so it's kind of throwing all the stats out of whack um I don't really get a chance to dive into it in too deep. But they can't, they can't sell for under mint anymore because they're jailed. Yeah. Good. And, <laughs> you know, they might have it listed for $3, but once you pay all the fees and everything, it's way above that. So it's kind of wrecking a few of these flaws. But again, we're just kind of doing a general overview rather than to dive into things too deeply. Oh, so they are still selling. They can. Yeah. It's just whether you want to eat those extra fees. So. Mm. It's a bit of a strange one. But yeah, Manhattan down 12% on the USD to $52. That's quite juicy. There's still huge arbitrage opportunity there. Interesting. I wonder how fast they're actually moving. Hmm. Anyhow, that'll do for that. <laughs> What's been happening in Upland? Should we just go straight to Upland? What's been happening? No, we got to do it. We got to do it the right way. Come on. Throw Jeez, what's been happening in Upland this week? A lot. Upland, I'll take it away. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's perfect. I love it. I get a dual intro. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. I didn't get any chicken wing love, but I got the intro. That's good. A little, shake me a little chicken wing. There we go. I love it. <laughs> shake your chicken wings. All right, people. Uh, here's what we got going on in Upland. This, uh, I, there's, there was some things last night, so I'm going to recap a couple of those, and then some illuminating uh, discussion that went on this morning inside of general chat. I, as a moderator in Upland, always get into that moderator channel and myself, Dog Romeo, Lily, uh, amongst others, try and ask all the questions that you want to have answered, but they're not ready to at, you know, answer those questions, but we kind of just keep prodding them until they give us a little bit of tidbits. So one of the things, and I'll, I'll save that little teaser for later, but one of the things that we have that uh, happened today was those world tourism block explorers did get distributed. So the Wayfair and the world tourism that you had to complete all 10 tours and then you were entered to win have been distributed. Now they're starting, they go in waves. So if you haven't gotten yours yet, you may still yet get them. They are granted, not tokenized, granted, meaning you get the graphical representation, you can wear them as a block explorer. However, 
when you do finally get them tokenized in game assets, what you're basically going to do is you go in, click the three little dots at the bottom of the screen, go into assets, click on block explorers. You'll see it there. See what mint number you got. Mint number matters. Okay. So depending on how many they mint of all these, you'll have a first that is the obvious first mint. You'll have a splitter. Let's say if there were 300 total, the splitter will be 150 and the closer will be 300. Now, these are going to be sought after. A lot of these going probably to the open market, a lot over in buy, sell, trade, shill, and, and assets in, in the in game Discord. Uh, sorry, in Discord in that channel. So those ought to be interesting to see what happens as we start to roll into the Halloween season for Block Explorers as well. You're going to start to see all those legacy spirit legits. Block Explorers, all of those types of things that are start coming back around. So from years past, the ghosts, the clowns, Spider by Billy, all these types of things, you're going to see them. And you're going to see a giveaway. I'm, I'm going to do a giveaway third week in October for Spider by Billy. It's the first time I'm announcing it right here. So you want to get in on that. It's going to be easy entry to win, but you may get yourself full body Spider Bite. Billy, you may want to use it as your MV Motors driver. You never know how it's going to go. I mean, you know. A baby can drive, right? There's no problem in that, driving MV Motors. Oh, uh, what else do we got? Uh, there is a CAPTCHA for the newly listed properties that's going around. If you haven't seen that for it, I think they're trying to, to also kind of pump the brakes on people that are, are listing and giving a second look at them so they don't put them on the open market for one upx instead of $1,000 maybe or whatever they're doing. Sometimes they get a little fast fingered on that. And before you know, snipe happens, boom, it's gone. Also in the upland.me merchandise store, Dallas, Texas merch has arrived. We've got stickers, we've got mugs, we've got all kinds of things. And if you didn't see, Upland was at the Texas State Fair. There are Miles plushies actually in as merchandise. I know a lot of people stop by there at the Texas State Fair. People are picking these Miles plushies up. I'm gonna see if I can grab a few, maybe do something during the holiday season so you know look around for those they're, they are very cute they're they're a very appealing little plushy so been waiting a while for those dirk is at the world blockchain summit in dubai so if you haven't checked that out it's going on and he's been tweeting out pictures of it it's october 5th and 6th so happening now they were a bronze sponsor over there should be very interesting who knows maybe we'll see some dubai I think we may have two to three cities left to open up in Upland coming up this year. Ought to be very interesting to see if we get an international release. I still feel like we're going to have a couple domestics and one international. You've got 80 plus working days for Upland. So we shall see how that rolls out. Uh, let's see. Others rock the vote. If you haven't done that, get out there. Name the block explorer. I think Vody McVote face. That, yes. that seems to be a very... <laughs> For the win. <laughs> seems to be very popular. I think you got like a day to have two days left. On the voting for these names, you have to have KYC in game. Click on your profile. If you set your home address, you can vote and you can change your vote all the way up till this closes out. The Porto Stadium has finally been completed. They moved their shop over there and uh, looks to be that they are doing some fun things over there. Same thing with Rutherford has completed their build on that one, too. Last uh, but not least, this little tidbit came in. Uh, the in-game communication. We've been waiting for this, waiting for this, waiting for this, waiting for this. We want to be able to do counter offers. We want to be able to tell those spammers no, and then maybe even block them from being able to sit there and push. So I asked the question, I pushed Squaw Muzzle on this today, community manager, over and over. And he did, he did let a, he let a little bit of a cow of the bag on this one. He's, I quoted him on this saying that the, the counter offer mechanism that we've all wanted, I don't think we're going to get that. I don't think there's going to be a counter offer to this. However, he did say you'll be able to potentially look them up and message that player. So you have access to the entirety of what would otherwise be the players who are registered in Upland. I don't know how you're going to be able to search on that, but obviously when they send you something, you'll be able to have some kind of communication via messaging in game. I don't know how Far it's going to be out till voice or video comes into play. Girl, That's that'd be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be. Uh, could be. Now they've talked about it. X One has talked about having video chat and other things like that. Uh, we know that there's going to be cafes that it will be coming in. So we shall see how this all kind of shakes out. And uh, that's the that's pretty much it. We've got a collection reveal for Arlington 
and Dallas coming up before the end of the week. So be on your, you know, kind of look at what you're going to do there. The Highland Park has been a huge speculation on whether that's going to be a limited or exclusive. It feels very much like Bel Air to me in Los Angeles. Don't get that many opportunities to go over there and mint those types of things. So that's it for the Upland action. Speaking of like legacy block explorers, where could one go to get a deal on a legacy block explorer? You know, Third City opened it up when there's this little place over in the River Park shopping mall called Uplando's Block Explorer. I've been getting quite a few in for the Halloween season. So if you've got something, DM me. I'll work with you on that price to get you the best bet I can. And then, of course, if you want to pop over to the cafe show that I do evening 7 p.m. PT, Fun stuff there. We give away NFTs. You never know what you're going to come across. So thank you so much. I woke up to one of those lovely ones in my William wallet this morning. Thank you. Yeah. Winner, winner. You got the uh, chicken leg dinner. Then 68 won himself an NFT. Rock and roll. It's good stuff. Chicken wing dinner. And Dak has his his, his hand up. He's got a question for (laughs) Uplander, I believe. Sure. So saw. I've seen that you've been promoting the Halloween BEs and everything. And uh, Shacklin and, and others, we were talking about how the spirit of Halloween, legit BEs and ornaments are going to be worth a bit more because Upland pretty much already announced, announced they're not doing another spirit of Halloween partnership. So this is it. What was released last year is it. Now they'll do something else for Halloween but they're not doing what they did last year. Yeah, it's interesting. They did that through the AMA on the quarter three. If you go back, you can take a look at it. Somebody asked that question. For this year specifically, yeah, no spirit, Halloween, otherwise legit block explorers. So those are going to become legacy second year around since they were released. And yeah, it's that time of the year. So people do dig these, and I can see these being the drivers for MV Motors. And yeah, Dak, you're right. It's... uh, it's unfortunate, but we'll see. We haven't seen what Upland has prepared for us. Usually wait, it's- Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. But Did you say unfortunate? It, it, well, it is in the no. fact that- it, it's it, a good it, No, it's wait, a good wait, 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 wait. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because of the opportunity that you have, we haven't had a pack drop, an actual pack or, you know, like that type of drop that had block explorers in it forever. So our block explorers are generally done through in the game sales in the marketplace. And to tr- if you ever you ever try to get an MV motor or a block explorer recently, it's brutal. You could be days out. When you get a pack drop, you do have a randomized chance when buying these legits to get these block explorers, and those have been doing very well. And you know, I'd like to see more of that. If it's not spirit legits, well, there's something else. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they actually do put anything out, but it's already October 4th and no one yeah. has heard anything about any kind of spirit, anything no. or any Halloween <laughs> stuff, period. That's so, how a as, blend does. That's, that's how they do. Know. That's how they that, roll. That's, that's what they do. They do yeah. what they do. We it's pushed well. them on it. We pushed them and said, we want full month of, of structural ornaments. Uh, Lissette said she was going to get back to us on this sometime this week. I suspect we're going to have a week to two weeks of it. I don't think there's going to be anything in terms of legits or blocky spore maybe we'll have some blocky spores and a tour or maybe at least a parade so we had portage i think last year on it this year who knows we got a lot of great neighborhoods that have done a lot what's that maybe creedmoor yeah creedmoor creedmoor nola portage all three of those yeah i know shecklin and those you know that group is doing a lot over there they got probably one of the best builds in terms of how they've structured that halloween note so very cool stuff can't wait to see what they've got coming up anything else from anybody else I was just going to say, like Samurai Aquatics, we have pushed, we put a submission in for a Halloween sign that we've asked to front load everything else that we've submitted. So I just got some, before we kicked off live, I got some news back there. So there's a bit of movement there. So hopefully we can get to full speed manufacturing of those. So there may be some extra bit of decorations out there that people can get a hold of. So I need to get a fast pass on this deal. I got to get a sign up on my property, Ben. What's up? We'll see how we go. All right. All right. Thanks for having me. That's it for the Upland uh, portion of this show. Thank you, Blando. (laughs) This is normally in the the part in the show where we sling over to our legits person, but we still haven't got a legits person. Nobody gives a (laughs) shit about legit. (laughs) 
Now, I did, I did spam this kind of ad all around the place. I spammed it in the NFL PA Legits chat, the Meta Ventures, rah, rah, rah. So I'll run through it again. So there is a Legits opportunity, and opportunity is available for someone heavily engaged in all things Legits to participate in this, the weekly UDU podcast with their own spotlight segment. Um, this would ideally suit a Legits Meta Venture owner as there are ongoing opportunities for self-promotion of your business, just as Uplando did for the Block Explorers as part of your segment. However, it isn't uh, restricted to that. Like if you're just somebody who's mad keen, um, get in touch. The overview is that you'd prepare and deliver a, about a five minute weekly segment on anything and everything happening under the theme of Legits in the week that was and will be in Upland. Um, this is wide open to your interpretation and could include short interviews or specialized promotions or giveaways that you organize independently. Of course, the requirements you must be available to record in the first 30 minutes of our weekly Zoom time slot, which is the Breaking Badly news segment, which is Tuesdays, 6.30, um, it's probably 6.30 to 7 p.m. UTC time. And most of all, Cheese and I value consistency of your commitment above all else because we are relentless week on, week on. So yeah, send me a DM to discuss further. I did get a couple of DMs, but that that you know I realized that time slot's not ideal for everybody, but unfortunately it's just is what it is because I got to get it done before I get slapped in the face by the in real life job. All right, speaking of special segments, we're gonna head on over to the Upland Puppet for our node report. Are you there, mate? Hey, how's it going? This is a brand new uh, segment that I've been asked to do here, so uh, please bear with me. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dance around Upland a little bit and talk to everybody in notes, and I'm going to come back and report what I've found out. Um, so this week, my first week, I actually uh, stopped by my own node, the node that I'm involved with, not the node I own. Um, and let me give you a little bit of information to start. So the owner is Jess Mills. Um, some of the key players in the node, uh, we're looking at Busterworth, Little Apple, David Walker, Tosshead, uh, myself, uh, McKaylee, uh, RDP, Cartworth, and Stinky Pete 11. There, I got through all those. Um, key features. And when, when I do reach out to a node, I'm going to go ahead to the owner and I'm going to ask him some of these questions. And I did sit down with Jess Mills for this. Uh, strong research. Uh, resource sharing community of, with the community of Spark. Uh, knowledge and gameplay strategies is what they say that they're uh, strong in, in sharing in their community, in our community, I guess. Uh, they're located on the back lot, of the 20th Century Fox Studios, which I thought was a cool fact there. Uh, it's also, they're also on the border of Beverly Hills, which is a really interesting location uh, as far as an expansion goes for LA eventually. Little jump off point there, if you will. Uh, there are two meta ventures in this location. There are uh, the Century Citizens uh, Collectibles and Rhinos Explorers, uh, both uh, BE shops. Uh, let's see, there's, uh, I was asked to mention that there are some big name players uh, coming down the road to open up a couple more meta ventures as well. Um, there are NFT projects going on. I believe there's three currently going on, including Floating Farms, I might add there. Uh, let's see, shameless promotion. I had to drop that. Um, and let's... Let's get into some numbers, I guess. Uh, stats, uh, stats for, the, let's see. We got uh, 522 to 680 uh, Century City properties are currently owned by Century citizens uh, with a 67.6% ownership. Uh, we're looking at 372 completed structures in total. Uh, and they are up to 120 completed structures just in the last six weeks, which is pretty, uh, pretty incredible accomplishment. Uh, CC is at currently at 54.7% complete building structures, and uh, there are 70 structures currently in progress. Uh, let's see, they are sitting at $170 for their USD uh, bottom. Yeah, that's where you can get in. And uh, let's see, the floor in UPX is sitting currently at 300 k um, I guess that's about all I have right now. I hope to develop this segment as time goes by and actually sit down and get to know all of these nodes. I know that we're going to have a lot more nodes as time's going by as well. So if you do have a node, please reach out to me if you want to get something across, because I mean, this is the way we're going to do it. But I'm happy just to be able to make this network and these connections as it goes by. So thank you guys for the opportunity. And that's all I have this week. If we wanted to find out more about flooding farms, where we, could we go there? Actually, good good question. Uh, please reach out on my Discord. I'll drop a link or if I can. And um, also any node owners or node representatives, uh, members, whatever, please reach out to me on Floating Farms also or DM me. 
in Discord. Absolutely. Now, Trees, do you remember what episode Floating Farms we looked at in the Wanna Tree uh, Show? I do. I know like every episode by heart, and I'm just going to talk a little bit right now until I get it. It was 51. Nice. <laughs> I had so, to go look. <laughs> and uh, and Ben, really quick, if you can, just put me on before up Lando next time because he has a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't don't tell me Mike. Where does it Mike D? He ran out of oxygen, did he? <laughs> How close was I to five minutes? What was that? A minute fifty? Where's Marty? Where's Marty? Is, is it Marty? Marty? Or... I think it's oh Mike. Is it? I thought it was Marty. Do you know the funny? It is Marty. It's Marty D. Oh, but the funny situation is the screen is blurred. Oh. I tried this new thing, so he's. He looks he's pornographic. Here, it looks like Puppet Witness Protection <laughs> Program over there. Right here. Uh, he he's just I, love your laugh, Keith. I do this just for your laugh. Oh, All right. I, I don't want to steal the show. I'm out of here. Nice. I'm All sorry. Right. I really am. I'm I don't want to follow that every week. I'm going first, Puppet. I'm going first. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's on Dak to follow that up. What's what's Thank going you. on, Dak? Have you got anything else to touch on with um, URL cars or racing? So I have to follow up Lando and a puppet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, racing. The there's not much excitement this week. Uh, I will say that uh, Musita and Uplando have a new track in URL that has been approved and submitted. We have seen multiple new tracks being submitted, um, and that's been kind of exciting. So, you know, kind of moving forward, I've heard of multiple projects out there that people are starting around racing. So the community is um, looking at racing and, and kind of trying their own hands at different elements of it. Um, we've had a lot of really good conversations around uh, community racing versus racing as a uh, function. And I think that, um, I feel that people are resonating with the concept of community racing versus just racing as a function. And so um, I think that that's really good because I, I wanted to make sure that people didn't lose sight of the effort uh, that is being invested by players and nodes and neighborhood projects to build these venues uh, that are really kind of focused on bringing the community and bringing the community for, uh, around racing events. Um, I have, uh, I think that what we're seeing is a, a big engagement from the community. I mean, I think URL is up over 70 tracks now, which is a massive amount of tracks. When you think about that, those are all venues and neighborhood projects, uh, all with required building. And, and those are just the ones in URL. People are building their own uh, racing kind of um engagements and doing their own thing. I mean, there's the Detroit Racing League. They have uh, something, you know, they have going on and they have NFTs that they're doing and, you know, people are kind of showing their, you know, what they have. And so we, we are seeing more and more folks kind of getting excited. The fact that um, Upland has been releasing functionality little by little for racing I think is getting people more and more excited. And now that we're getting closer to actually being able to do AI racing and from there being able to do player to player racing and that there are so many other projects and unity layers that are starting to also develop, we're going to start seeing, I think a lot more engagement around racing and where racing can actually go in Upland. What's going to be interesting is once we have the racing going, really the kicker is going to be when the metaverse um, I don't know if they're going to be meta ventures, if they're going to be um, layer two kind of things or whatnot. But when the meta venture shops, the um, garages, the design shops and all of those other things start to really kind of become a reality. The other thing that I think was really exciting is also the idea that people are going to be able to submit for a MV Motors factory in the near future. Um, I know UCC has been talking about doing this since November 2021. And so almost a year later, you know, we're still talking about it. But we know that Upland is now saying well, you will be able to do it. So, you know, that's better than soon. Mm. 
right? So there is definitely a lot around the vehicle, the um, and, and what I've always talked about, the ec economic model of racing in Upland. And that really is, I think, starting to show. What's going to be interesting as well is um, vehicle economy. We've seen um, the vehicles kind of get sold out. We've seen um, the number of vehicles that people are able to have and access kind of limited. Some people have four or five, other people started buying out. I mean, I, I think Abdullah, I don't know how many Abdullah has now, but he has like a full on parking lot. Yep. Yeah, and so, <laughs> and so <laughs> it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, and so I think that vehicles are going to become really interesting. Another conversation that keeps being brought up is the idea of, well, when is Rev Racing coming to Upland? Rev Racing, I, I think while Rev Racing is part of the Anamoka brands um, that has been invested in, I think that if you can buy a vehicle, a vehicle NFT in Rev Racing for a dollar to $4, but meanwhile, it costs you Eight hundred to four thousand dollars to buy a vehicle in Upland, or four hundred dollars to a thousand dollars to buy a vehicle in Upland. There is definitely a discrepancy in terms of what you're going to get the value for, and I don't see Upland destroying their own economic value by allowing Rev Racing cars to be able to race in the same level an Upland vehicle would be able to race. So I don't think that that's going to be a reality, but in layer two anything is possible yes at, at this stage we just I'll stop need there. more cars in more people's hands don't we well i think that it might become very interesting for um for commuter cars you know being able to buy a commuter car for four bucks four thousand upics i mean that would be ridiculous right yeah. um i know that when we're looking at commuter cars in in kind of like a MV Motors player model, we're thinking 40 to 50,000 upics in terms of like an entry level commuter car, right? And so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, also, it's going to be interesting to see what players end up doing with being able to build their own kind of ve vehicles and how do you market and go into market with all that. So there, there's a lot of different elements that are happening. And, and what's great is that the upland economy around racing continues to build. Awesome. Um, now, I was just going to type to Cheese, but I'll just ask you, Cheese, did you want to mention the Nosef New York stuff that's starting to kick off a bit, or is that still under wraps for a while? He he just DM'd me. I'm trying to get him in there. It's uh, He's been working really, really hard. Um, All right. Are you talking um, about the E-Track? Oh, it, it's, of... it's, like, um, it's like a New York node kind of thing i'm part of the bronx and he's kind of bring us bringing us all together and oh the race around the around the different oh, now this, this um, is boroughs. a massive project involving yeah. a whole bunch of stuff so yeah. yeah all right okay we might leave it at there and see if he can we'll get him in at some stage and he can go over it a bit more yeah. all right that leaves us with the nft news drop it like it's hot segment joe and rob are you there boys drop it like it's hot. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I want to see Joe get up and drop it like it's hot. Oh, and I just want to say, I the soon thing. I love how they they took that and they kind of ran with it. Upland, I think they should get it like like they they do have it's it. Gonna be merch, right? Yeah, yeah. It's be merch. Yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys are ready for the. For the oh, NFT yeah. drops. Okay, cool. So welcome to the third edition of Drop It Like It's Hot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the first drop today is Galleria, which actually took place yesterday on Monday at 15 UTC, 8 a.m. California time. Uh, so last week we talked about cat stickers and lovable cats. And now here we're talking about cats being cut in half and presented by the Galleria. This one's called Magical Cat, and I'm not sure what's so magical about a cat cut in half, but uh, not all these are suitable for work. One of the things is called Cute as Fuck. Definitely, <laughs> definitely some and not safe for work name. stuff in there. Wow. Wait, so, not safe for work in regards to gore? Or... Gore, and also they have like an array of them. Um, 
uh, they have an array of stuff, which is borderline, nothing too crazy, but definitely I saw one with like clearly a nipple in it and stuff like that. Can you put um, the link in the, the chat here? Um, yeah, just, yeah, for just sure. Send it to me. Yep. So a little more about that. Uh, Galleria NFTs created by house music DJ producer and promoter Odonis. About 20 years, he's been working massive digital artists so, and for his events he realized the poten potential for them to join the nft world and decide to be a bridge between artists and collectors around the globe after being left out without a source of income by the pandemic as most of the artists in ecuador and south american countries were no financial aid to artists were offered nfts being a unique chance to generate income from their art i should add these they have some really great artists and i, I really dig their stuff um it's really nice nicely done yeah on their website, uh, it says, what is the plan? The plan is to help Ecuadorian artists to generate gains from their art and expand into other third world countries that might be in the same situation as they are. Some of the collections are, like I said, cute as fuck by Mokoko. They are out of Peru. Uh, there's Ecuadorian artist, Ivan Casanova, and he's got the Casanova cats and this <laughs> super cool Homer Simpson you might see as Rob's got on his picture. Oh, cool. um you got boss ordinez with crypto ravers and they also have uh <laughs> fan art submissions and i don't know much about it but they do have uh fan art as well yeah so the next one we're going to talk about is uh another funko drop this one's for game of thrones um one, and that is uh that, that's actually happened pretty much right today 1800 utc 11 a.m pst um, you got to go to their site and get in line um, and, and pray that you get lucky, <laughs> pretty much. Um, that's how you do it. So we found out today. Yeah, uh, I actually got lucky. Rob got lucky before me. And I just saw in the chat earlier that Slav got lucky, too. So that's awesome. Um, and OK, so it's again, it's the same thing with these Funko Drops. You get uh, packs of five for $9.99 and packs of 15 for 29.99 and they both have about 32,000 um they have those uh, redeemable ones as well and they have Daenerys Targaryen with an egg Jamie Lannister with a gold hand the mini-faced Arya Stark Yoqueen Hagar with a mask the hound beyond the wall and last but not least Jon Snow the Wildling yeah, but, uh, he knows nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but what about Hodor? <laughs> anyway, a, a little info you might want to know about some of the Funko drops. Um, the Looney Tune packs that we talked about, you know, $9.99. Um, they're selling for $17.65 on Atomic Hub. Um, they're only about a week or so old. The premium packs, which were $29.99, are up to $51.91. And the highest sale for those seventy seven seventy nine. So it's kind of like Upland, you know, people FOMO right when the drop happens, and you know they're willing to pay top dollar, um, and then it kind of slowly cools down and you know finds its floor, kind of deal. Yeah. Okay. So and just so we, you guys all know, the the drops that Funko has done before, they did the Looney Tunes and the Got, which we covered Game of Thrones, and they've done DC Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Avatar. My Little Pony, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle, Turtle Power. Power, nice, <laughs> uh, Hanna Barbera, Kellogg's, Silent Bob and Jay, Halloween, Black Light Battle, Star Trek, Scooby Doo, Like Zoid Scoob, nice. Nickelodeon, Transformers, <laughs> Fantastic Plastic, <laughs> and one of Rob's favorites, Iron Maiden. And Rob's favorite painter, Bob Ross, so cultured Rob. Uh, retro comics, and last but not least, Bob's Big Boy. And I pretty much know all of those other than Fantastic and Blacklight Battle. So I'm going to have to check those two mystery ones out. You forgot Iron Maiden. He said Iron Maiden. Uh, he said it. He did say it. Yeah, I was waiting yeah. too. My, one of my favorites. <laughs> um, so some drops to briefly mention are TAG, which stands for the Adventures Guild, which are uh, releasing the Pet Rock. That's Saturday, 10-8, 12 UTC, 4 p.m. PST. 
Pet Rock, huh? Yeah. And then we, we got the cat stickers again on Catterday okay. at 10 a.m. California time. And I failed getting those last time. So I'm going to try this time. And then we got Waxel World and their treasure hunting, uh, hunting event starts. And that's also Saturday, 14 UTC, 6 PST. And then we have Tales of the Crypto with a CD's <laughs> weapon, CD's nuts weapon. Uh, that's on Sunday at 12 p.m. <laughs> California time. And I think, okay, Rob, I think that's going to wrap us up for today. I think we definitely... Dropped it like it's hot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what are you doing, Chase? <laughs> I'm just enjoying life. I'm trying to. Nice. I like. I love Tuesdays. I love this. I love it when we all come together and talk. It's definitely a lot of fun. Thank you for that, boys. There's a lot to dive in there, so make sure you check all those out. I'll endeavor to drop the <laughs> links in the description. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to MBE news and updates. Uh, one and cheese this week for episode 52. We had a chat with Yo Creati, who is one of the co founders of the super creative and beautifully created Novo Pangea NFT experience. And it's also setting up, yeah, it's also setting up to be a multiplayer blockchain strategy game. So um, Novo Pangea's immersive content is brought to life through deeply engaging storylines, stunning visual animations, and sound effects, creating a truly unique experience for blockchain gamers and NFT collectors alike. Um, yeah, um, Yo Creati was kind enough to send me a pack while we were on live and I cracked that open and had a dive in. And I'm definitely going to get myself another one once I can save up a bit more wax. Um, cheese, what, what did you think about that whole thing? That was, well, that was I think one that of your was, finds. Yeah, I, I think it was really great that, and, and then if you get a pack and you get nothing but commons and uncommons, that doesn't mean you didn't get anything because you could go to the Novo Marketplace and turn them in for uh, credits that will then get give you either worker or land. Um, I suggest getting a worker first, definitely, because you could always put it on somebody else's land to gain the obsidian. They're also doing um, pack drops this week. Today's Tuesday. So I think the first pack drop is tomorrow. It's a... <clears throat> 12 card pack drop for $25. And then Thursday, I think there's one slot left, which is a $25 card pack uh, pack drop for $50. Me and Goldie are in the um, the Thursday one. Absolutely. So this is some of the ones that I cracked open in my pack. Um, yeah, I'm not going to click on them because it'll fry my laptop. But yes, Look at D-Tech all... peeking at us there. Down there, yes. So then it deals what, what do they call them? There's five different realms or something. Um, yes, they have let's see how good I am. Time, which I'm in, light, which Yo Creati is in, shadow, which you and Miss Yo Creati is in, um, earth, water, and space. Space, thank yes. you. Yeah, so definitely go and check that out. Um, oh, look, you, we've got a sneak peek there of the Laughing Otter NFT that Cheese did up. And yes, I'm working on Mr. Upland Puppets now. Um, uh, I am making them extremely, uh, how do you say? What, like, uh, detailed. Graphic. That's, detailed, that's really detailed. Really awesome. Yeah, from what Thank we've seen. You. Now, I went a little bit ham on the old mint number 68s from the Ultra Horrors last night. Oh, yeah. Gobbled up a whole bunch of those. And I also got my Rad Farmers packs coming from Tales of the Crypto. So. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I should have mine too. I did yeah, actually look. Have... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I get these free, what is it now, every two weeks? Yeah. Because well, I've you... got the, what the are cheese they? heads. Yeah, I've got the cheese head. And I, I was actually going to go and buy a couple more. But the floor on those now is like 47 wax or something. So it's got quite up there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the NFT I got from Uplando for being part of the Upland Cafe show. I always, I always like to get in there. It's very rare that I get an opportunity to listen in live. So um, cool. Tales of the Crypto is, I don't, uh, they're, they're coming out with like new stuff this week. They, they've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. 
mm. because of uh, blockchain issues and just trying to get everything perfect. But their storefront is going to change very soon um, in their the the website. So you'll be able to kind of go on on actual raids, which is really cool. Like you'll have the 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 person, the weapon, the land, all of that good crap. Nice. And Joe's just I can't wait. Joe's just gonna <laughs> grab, grab a couple of sixty eights for me. Woo. <laughs> now as part of the Yo Creati um morning cheese episode that we did we also released the clips football soccer in the metaverse walmart in the metaverse and the one the one that just released this morning was blackrock has entered the metaverse via an etf what does that mean again cheese elect what is it something fund yeah (laughs) wait what did you say i got excited because i saw no steve come in BlackRock Metaverse ETF. What does what yes. that mean again? ETF? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Goldsmith was laughing at my my description because I was trying to make it as layman's terms as possible. So mm-hmm. let's say you're making like a tuna salad. You grab your bowl and you get all your, your tuna stocks and you put them in there. You mix them around and say, hey, you want to buy this? That's an ETF. Nice. In layman's terms. <laughs> all right. Anything else been happening in the MV this week, Cheese? Uh. <laughs> not that i can think of All let's right. throw it to nosy let's just put him out there into the wild are you there nosy we're just your ears must have been burned we were just talking about you i was talking to him in, in dm yeah he is he there or is he there? get yourself off of mute nosy no you're muted muted there you go there we go I know. you hear me now yes <laughs> hey guys hey. how are you Good, good. How you doing? I'm great. Thanks. Talk about this. Whatever. I didn't know how much we didn't know how much we can really say about this. It, like, um, I'm a part of this project, but you're definitely the leader, the captain. Um, can, what can you tell us about it? Um, <clears throat> uh, it's all about um, connecting every uh, people that have uh, a bit of interest in uh, the New York City of Upland like together. Uh, so we want to make like the a big surprise on the release day. So I will, I will not say much today, but I can tell you that it's a really brand new tool that uh, that will be offered to the, to the Upland ecosystem because the what we did on the on the logistic of the server it's totally fresh you you didn't see that you 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 didn't see that before on the all up and ecosystem it's something really new that will connect everyone um so yeah we just need now to to fill the server and and see how it goes so yeah we will launch like uh, so monday monday on the 10th uh so yeah we are releasing like a kind of a party for the release um so yeah i I will tease all the week uh through twitter um so yeah i will will make some posts like uh like d minus six d minus five with few ins every day and we'll release everything uh on monday yeah that sounds exciting we might (laughs) um see if we can coordinate and get you back on next week's show and we can do a special metaverse spotlight on everything that you got going on yes Ah, that would be awesome Yay. Really helpful, actually. So yeah, No Steve showed me a few things, and they're they're extremely impressive. So like, I can't wait for everything to like come into mm. into play. This is going to be cool. Well, that's something you guys have been working on for several months now. Jeez, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Nosif was kind of talking about like the beginnings of that when he was on the Wine and Cheese Show way back when. So yeah. He still doesn't have my my cheese icon though, because I watch his French show. Cause it, it, it'll, it'll, um, he has a show, he has his own show, which is cool. And I, I get the, uh, subtitles in English and I, I feel like I'm learning French, but I'm not, but, <laughs> but yeah, you, you got to put the cheese on there. You got that in there, but you don't have the cheese on there yet. So you got to put the cheese in there. Just like be naughty. It's a <laughs> copy and paste action going. <laughs> copy and paste action. <laughs> All right, so we'll try. We'll try and we'll get notes if it's keyed up for next week, and we'll dive into everything. By that stage, everything should be out in the open. So yeah, um, 
if people want to keep an eye on how that all fold, unfolds, where's the best place to go about that? Is it just going to be in the Upland general chat or where are you going to release this? Is it a Twitter thing? Or? Yeah, actually, like, um, so I will put like streets on the on Twitter uh, with a link that bring you like uh, in a server that uh, is uh, like open just only for the purpose of uh, like a kind of uh, accumulate, uh, like gather people in there. And on Monday, uh, we'll release uh, the official link of the server in this uh, first server. So there is like a kind of waiting room server. So everybody will will drop in the server at the same time. And it could be like pretty nice. Like uh, to create what's a your, kind of moment. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, it's New York as it's NYC uh, underscore upland at nyc underscore upland all right yeah so make sure make sure you're following that to keep up to date and yeah i will of course uh, i will i will just like um make all the the advertising uh, through twitter so i will drop like the twitter link of the each uh, tweet i post every day uh yeah everywhere uh, in upland and in the co common channels uh, where we can share those kind of stuff of course perfect well thanks for jumping in today and giving us a little bit of a preview and yeah make sure you Check out Thank next week's show. I'm get Nosef back on for a deep dive. So that means I got to get awesome. my page in, in the Discord ready sooner than later. <laughs> Monday. <Yes. laughs> All right. Wrapping up the Breaking Bad News, we'll finish on the Samurai Aquatics and Decor updates. Um, our medium factory in San Francisco is at full production with the first 15 items being completed in about two hours, I think. Um, I've also moved all of the existing manufactured stock onto our showroom property at 30 Aqua Vista Way. So that's ready for opening day. Um, just as a general heads up on that, while we are taking reservations for mint numbers one to 10, as we outlined last week, we're not accepting any offers or making any sort of trades or sales until the outdoor decor meta ventures are officially opened. Um, yeah, some of the other shops are already selling via uh, legits and burners and all that sort of stuff. But that's just such a major pain in the butt. Um, we're kind of just going to hold out for the official release. So, you know, we, we've been waiting for 19 months now. I think we can hold out for another month or two until they're ready. So until then, we'll just keep building, building, building. Accumulating. Um, if, yes. If you do want to reserve one of the mint number one to tens, uh, send me or cheese DM and we'll hook you up on the list. And yeah, if you didn't see in last week's show, we put that out as a spotlight where it has um, a link to our reservation spreadsheet with prices and whatnot. Um, we're hoping to get some more information about other items that we're going to start manufacturing should be within the next couple of days, hopefully, based on some of the information we've seen in the background. And then once, as soon as we get the spark hours from that, um, DTEC Cheese and myself will get together and we'll work out the rest of our pricing. So keep your peepers out for that one. All right, moving on to the wine of the week. Um, I've put this down today as sticker shock. Dallas and Arlington. Well, what's the justification for that? Do you think what's so special about Dallas and Arlington that the prices Expensive. were so? Yeah, prices were whoa. You know, one got money. Three for that. city, tier three city. Tier three? It's not even yeah. a tier one. Nope. What? No, it's the first tier. Wow. It's the first tier three. Who cares? What is? Why is that a thing? Oh, it's the first tier three. And Dallas is expensive. <laughs> Dallas is I mean, expensive. like, it's all right. So it's expensive as Manhattan is what yep. it is, which is a tier one. Uh, from my understanding, tier one is better than okay. tier three. Wait, wait. There was a lot of places in Dallas that were not that expensive. Highland Park be an exclusion because I everyone believes that's going to be an exclusive collection, right? But the city as a whole, there were a lot of sections uh, that were not super expensive. I bought four properties in Dallas that I was able to afford for, with 100,000 UPEX. But you're saying yeah. not expensive, but the, the floor in Arlington that I saw for non-FSAs was about 10K and in Dallas it was about 12K. But in Manhattan, we were minting for 2K. So. Okay, all right. But you were also minting... Uh, sub 1000 mint properties and you had you know uh two years ago 
the yeah. prices of cities were very different than the yeah, prices yeah. they are today. And, and so it, I think it's unfair to compare apples and oranges. So what do you think, Chase? Is this just an evolution of, is this, is this the norm? Maybe. And if it is, I'm so glad I got in when I did, because, um, yeah, <laughs> I'd rather see for like, all right. So the, the good thing about Dallas is there's a lot of big properties there. If you wanted to start a business, a meta venture, and have room for a factory or say a showroom, that's the place you want to go. You want to pick these up before they're gone. That's going to be the only thing that I see personally having any kind of value going forward as the collection start, the collection did start dwindling away. Um, as the use for smaller properties start dwindling away, you're going to want to own a lot of uh, up to square. Um, yep. That is for me the biggest the biggest positive of Dallas and Arlington. I, I can't think of anything else since, since it's a tier three. Yeah, yeah. Well, now I feel better for not getting anything in Dallas. Thank you, Chief. Well, I, I definitely would have went there and gotten at least like a few, maybe three or three to five, um, just to have the standard collection and, and maybe right. like a nice big one. But like I said before, my funds were dedicated to my my Bronx node, the, the UDU Bronx node, and um, I needed to to put the funds there. But yeah, I mean, it's getting to a point where you have to pick and choose now. You can't you can't go to every single city that opens. You have to say, hey, like strategy, like do I do I want to go here? Or do I do I need to save my money for something else? For me, I'm you know I'm not a Southern person. I'm I'm from New York. Um, Dallas didn't spark any like excitement for me. I would be more excited with Boston, or you know stuff like that. So or I Atlanta. Ended up, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say I ended up in Dallas and bought four properties because I ended up getting lucky and getting a train station. So. Ooh. I had to buy the four properties to get the city pro bonus in Dallas. So I can get the 1.4 X. I'm so yeah. sorry. You had such a rough time. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, like I've had two big wins in Upland. That was a Genesis BE and a train station. And I'll tell you the train station has been a much better deal. Wow. Congratulations. It's on my bucket list for sure. Nice. So are you holding on to that or are you looking to flip it? I have it up on sale. It's cheaper than any other train station property in Dallas right now. The train station, yeah, they're going for really cheap nowadays. Like I sold mine. I, w I well, got lucky. I got mine in Chicago and I was able to sell mine for $5 million to Abdullah. Thank you so much for that. Um, actually, I'm going to go take mine off the market right yeah, now. Yeah, take it. Take it <laughs> off. Like seriously, you don't want to, you don't want to be a holder like the cheese. Like I, well, Here's the other thing that I realized about Dallas. The only way to get to Arlington is from Dallas train station. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I, I gobbled up a few in Dallas for the release, and then I went over to Arlington and gobbled up a few over there. And I'm back in Dallas now. I'm just stacking my divs, and I'm going to mint up maybe five or six Highland Parks, just as a bit of a long-term thing to hold on to. Um, and that leads to the win of the week this week. Um, I had a win this week. I ticked over and I now have 6,666 properties. Woo! Congrats! Yay! Wow. I'm going to have to pick up an extra one though, because we are going to give away a, one of those properties um, next week. So we'll get onto that in a second. So yeah, that was my little win. Anybody else have a win? No? I got that Bronx deal I wanted. Well, that's and a good segue. Able, yeah. <laughs> that's a good segue, Cheese. What's happening in the Bronx download this week? So, I mean, I'm just going to bring it up because I'm just so proud of how hard we've been working in there. And everybody is just so awesome and just kind of like putting into each other's. Uh, While you're bringing that up, I'll just touch on M. Um, Midtown Terrace. Um, there's not a lot happening in Midtown Terrace. I've got about 15 days to finish off the first section of the Chode node. 
and then I'll be <laughs> then I'll be stacking back in Nintendo Terrace on the randos. All right. Whoa, look at that beautiful big three blocks there, cheese. Yes, this was the one that I wanted. Ooh. So now I can like chill out. Um, if I get this one, you know, I don't care, whatever. But I wanted this right here to be where I put like an expansion of you know our outdoor decor I, I want to have a showroom here um I would like like others to to come in and and build showrooms as well like to do other stuff to bring other other stuff but with, like factory wise there really isn't any property here that I would recommend a factory go on even myself personally because it's not worth it they're so small even this one right here it's under a thousand like yeah, there's I, really not much I wonder if you might be able to squeeze a medium <clears throat> factory in there yeah but I want the showroom yeah yeah I, I really don't think it's worth building a small factory um yeah I'm actually not. I'm actually waiting to demolish the original small. Well, it wasn't the original. It was the second small factory we were manufacturing out of. I'm waiting to demolish to demolish that, but there's some glitch associated with it. So the team's trying to work that out as part of the uh, better business user experience. So yeah, I'll be demolishing that and putting a medium one up with two Spark Max. Um, I can't imagine if Samurai Aquatics was to outsource manufacturing to other places, we wouldn't be looking to do it in a two Spark factory. It's yeah. just not worth the hassle. So. Well, yeah, medium or up, definitely. Yeah. Showrooms, if you wanted to get your hands on stuff and resell it in a, in, a, in a showroom, like that one is, that's recommended. But just make sure you have the space because when you have a showroom, mind you, let's say the showroom takes up this whole thing here, right? Yeah. You're going to need space to show, to, to hold because your showroom, it's not all inside. It's all behind. Yep. So you're going to need that space. So just think about that before you go on to that journey. Yeah, you need inventory space. Absolutely. All right. Um, we'll move on to the how to UDU segment this week. Um, it's only going to be a very quick one. We're just going to have a quick look at the membership tiers and some of the art that DTEC has done up for those and the NFTs that um, Mortries has put together for them. So I'll see if I can click the right buttons here and bring it up. No, nope, that's the wrong one. So, yeah, if you didn't know, this is something we talked about for a very long time was putting together. Uh, Pardon me, membership NFTs. So what we've got here is the, this is the back of the sovereign membership NFTs and sovereigns means the UDU administrators, that's Cheese and myself. Um, very cool artwork that DTEC did. Like he, a lot of this is his original stuff. Plus um, that's yeah. the logo from Screw. We are kind of rethinking branding. So I don't know. Maybe maybe next year that might be a good good um, point to work through for the yeah. start of next year is to well, we're going to do a complete overview of the branding. Of course, we're going to lean heavily into the whole cult accusations because as I keep telling everyone, if people are bullying you and you just own it, well, they lose all their power. So we love <laughs> it. Um, and yeah, we've got primi nodi adificantes. That means first node builders. So that's kind of cool. And that's the back. That's the front. So we have. Um, our, our kind of evil version of the llama and he's wearing his UDU cloak with the gold trim. And then we've got our Sentinels, which is our UDU management. As we talked about uh, last week in the drama verse segment, these are the members that help us deal with any drama or things like that within the UDU team. And those have their black, their black cloaks. Um, what do we got next? Acolytes. This is the main kind of UDU active node builders. This is kind of the main one that your, I don't know, your regular UDU member would get. And that's that's the black cloak with the red trim. And then we've got a whole bunch of different versions after that. Old guard. These are people who have been in the UDU team for a long time and they've either built out all of their node properties or they've kind of dropped off and aren't that engaged anymore. They're going to slip into the old guard kind of feature. 
they ate like, all the Cheetos and they're just on the couch, like watching everything happen. Still a part of the family, but not that as active as they were. <laughs> yes, we we used to retire those accounts to the dungeon, but you know we've we're we're going a half a glass them. half full approach these days. So we want them a part of the family. Yes. So then the neophytes, these are our <laughs> these are our newest UDU members. So they've passed vetting, but they just don't have any node properties. Um, that's those guys. And then then we've got a whole different bunch of ones for the individual nodes. So, you know, mid ten terrace, lone mountain and that sort of thing. So there's a whole bunch of those. And then of course, even our very new vetting members, they um get their own NFT as well. They're so pure white. So they have to make theirs red by We're I gonna evilize them. We <laughs> Now, we have been very <laughs> slack. We do know there are a bunch of vetting UDU members who are in the team waiting to upgrade. Um, I was hoping to get that done this week. We'll see how we go. There's just so much kicking on with Samurai Aquatics and everything else at the moment. Plus, as I think I mentioned last week, my in real life jobs ramped up to just kicking me at all angles. So we'll see how we go. Um, and that's about it, I think. Oh, and then there's there's a bunch of other ones. Like no, if you're a node manager, you get a special blue cloak. Um, if you're an yeah, MD, I didn't do, I didn't mint those yet, so don't yet. hold your breath. <laughs> yeah, they're on the way. That MBE content creator, yeah, you get a special green cloak, and I think that was it. So yeah, now as part of that, as she just mentioned, there we do set these up as their own NFTs. And how many have you done, Cheese? Do you know off the top of your head? A lot. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. I think I had that here. Not that one. It might be this one. Yeah, there we go there. So far, we've got the old guard, the neophytes, the vetting, the acolytes, the sentinels, and the sovereigns. Now, we're a bit behind on this too. There's a few people that we're waiting to send their NFTs as well. So if you haven't yet received your NFT as part of being in the UDU member, membership, um, just send us a DM. That's probably the best way because, you know, then we'll get yeah. on the next week. We got a couple in that I have to send the vetting to. Yeah. Yeah, guys, you have to throw a shoe at me. Like, don't even, don't feel bad about doing it. Cheese is spread thin. So I appreciate all and every reminders I get. Yes, absolutely. All right, that'll do for that. Now, where are we up to? Oh, the code word for this week's 1 million Upex wheels is don't forgive and don't forget. Does anybody know where that's from? What the fuck? <laughs> don't forgive and don't forget. Ben. Anybody know? See how old you are. That's a that's no. the show called Dallas. I, I um did a bit of a Google last night. Uh, famous famous quotes from old mate J.R. Ewing. And that was one of the top ones that popped up. I like that one. So don't forgive and don't forget. Nope. Maybe I'm the oldest. Who shot him? Yeah, there you go. Dak knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> gray beard. <laughs> I mean, he's got his high. I call it highlights, and it's not gray. It's, it's oh, right, right, right. Fancy right, right, highlights, right. Dad. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're stylish. <laughs> I'll say that one more time. So the code word is "don't forgive and don't forget." Good words to live by. All right, uh, the how to upland segment today. We're just going to touch on this very briefly. Um, I've put this down as under mint madness now. This is all goes with the city releases and it's kind of follows on from some of the stuff we're talking about at the front of the show with um, floors and this, that, and the other thing. So I got on before and did a bit of a clickety clicking around to see what's actually going on in the markets with Dallas at the moment. So the first thing I did was um, over here at upxland.me. And yeah, if you're just listening on the Spotify, you're going to have to bear with us here. So this screen is Dallas unlocked and non-FSAs. So currently the floor in Dallas is 12,210 UPX, which is kind of the price that I was gobbling a few up at. So that's what you can get the under mints for. Uh, sorry, that's what you can mint for. And this next screen is what's available on the USD floor price. And it's um, ranked by markup percentage. So even now you can buy... Wow. You can buy USD floor in Dallas for 82% markup. So even with the fees applied, 
that's well, well below the minting price. So that's a hell of a deal there. That farmer's market thing for eight seventy one. Yeah. I am like drooling, but I got to save my money for okay. other stuff. And I, I just want to go back and revisit what you were saying earlier. Why is it so expensive? All right. Yep. It's a 185 UPEX per UP2 yep. versus a thousand and change UPEX per UP2 in Manhattan, San Francisco, and LA. Mm. I mean, LA, I think when they released was like, I, I think the lowest was 200 and something UP2. Yeah. So if you bring it down to the appropriate unit of measurement, then you can do apples to apples. These properties are all much bigger than what you were getting in some of the other releases. I mean, 60 is the smallest UP2 they have. Yeah, that's, that's 12. Point. I mean, 12 grand for 60, uh, 60 UP2 is pretty good. Yeah, especially if you're buying it, like I say, here on the USD floor. Now, unfortunately, I don't do anything with USD because I'm Australian. And if I try and buy USD, you just get smashed with the extra credit card charges and this, that, and exchange fees. It kind of doesn't work out like that. So, And I'm not really selling in-game for USD either. So... But yeah, if, if you can make use of that, that, that's a hell of a strategy there because that's even $11 is even below the, the mint floor price. So so that's what's happening in the USD in Dallas. Um, as far as the UPX floor, so this is ranked uh, for sale UPX markup again. So this is a bit different. Yeah, the markup for the UPX floor is 95%. So even once the fees applies, you're pretty much at mint value. So although that is a, that's a pretty large property, 764 up squared. So yeah, so definitely now, the deals to be had of the USD, Cheese. I have a question to ask. Um, is it okay to buy like stuff that's under mint? Like, like let's say you come here and you see stuff like what's, what, because I'm very paranoid. I'm, I, I'm very nervous. I don't want to get in trouble. Let's say you see something and it's below 50% markup. Go for it. Yeah. As far Absolutely. as buying goes, I think you're totally clear. I think if you're somebody who's constantly selling and going under mint, that's where it gets a bit gray. All right. All right. If, if you're selling to the same person under mint at 20% mint, you will be busted. Yeah. But what if it's just the same person that's purchasing it? You'll yeah. be sniped long before you can create a pattern. All right. No, I would never sell it, but I would love to buy some of these. Absolutely. Right. And you'll never buy enough to be registered because you'll be sniped be by, by others. So that's what's happening in Dallas now. I've got it here for Arlington too. We'll just check the same thing. So Arlington, again, this is Arlington uh, unlocked non-FSA. So this is the mint price floor. And it's yeah, a bit over 10K, so 10,570. Um, that's what I was gobbling. Mine up was in that range as well. So USD floor. Um, that's a that's also down. Well, 88% markup on the USD floor there. So you can pick those up for nine dollars sixty, nine dollars forty, twelve dollars. So that's again, that's a hell of a deal. So yeah, if you're somebody who can make use of that USD, I know a lot of people are switching to this strategy. I don't know, it might have been Shacklin or somebody like that was saying that they're not even going to bother going to to mint for these releases. They're just going to wait for the the under mint floors and yeah. gobble them up from there. So it's a pretty smart strategy. And just yeah. to wrap that up, we'll look at the UPX for Arlington. So this is the sale floor on UPX. Yeah, that's 106% there. So yeah, definitely not worth buying any of those unless it's in a specific area that you wanted. Um because yeah, there's still under mints that are, oh, sorry, there's still mints that are cheaper than that sale price floor. So it's definitely interesting. It's definitely something that I would take advantage of if I was able to with USD dollars. And kind of asking, what was the code word again? Um, what was it? I'll, I'll be don't nice. Don't trust no funny. one. Don't forgive no one. Don't forgive. Don't forget. Oh, <laughs> damn. All right. Now. Holy we are running a bit long for time, which was surprising. Um, don't have a metaverse spotlight for this week, so we're just going to skip straight over that. Uh, competition and prize details for last week's weekly challenge was you had to get on over to the YouTube for the previous episode's um, show, and you had to let us know what metaverse drama you faced and how you dealt with it. Uh, there was a couple of good ones in there, and the prize was to go on the wheel in this week's show for a chance at winning 10000 
UPX. Now nice. I'm going to press the right button today and let's give that away. So we had NFT Architects, Joe Lives, Cassastra, Kevin Lodar, Radish Head, and Zoe all got their entries in before I took the snapshot this morning. Let's see who's going to claim that 10K just for a few seconds of their time and sharing a bit of drama. Oh, it's another borderline one. I think Joe might have it. Uh, Joe, Joe, he's cleaning up. I think Joe won last know. week. Didn't he win 10K last week too? Woohoo! <laughs> I have to put you on the payroll, Joe. Radishhead is going to call you out. <laughs> Why is that? Why am I in trouble with the radish man? Rigged, rigged. Rigged. <laughs> yes, yeah, so thank you, Joe. Um, let's see where we're up to. Oh, so the challenge for this week, or for, yeah, for this week, where did I put that? Uh, let us know. So this is going to go back to an MBE server. Um, challenge. So you have to get yourself over to the MBE server, find the contest channel, which is the only channel within the MBE that has an icon, it's a little trophy icon, and let us know what you picked up in the Dalling, in the Dallas Arlington release and what you plan to do with it. Of course, if you didn't pick up anything, you can let us know um, why you didn't as well. Now, the prize for that is we're going to give away, as we've started doing every city release, we give away a free property after the release. So we're going to give away a Dallas property. That's going to be 6142 Woodcrest Lane in Dallas, of course. So once again, jump on into the contest channel of the MBE server and let us know what you did or didn't pick up in the Dellington Arlington Jewel release. So that's about it. Now, we didn't have our wonderful Jazzy Jazz in today. So Cheese and I have to do this kind of, um, what did we say it is? Dictation? Is that the correct word? Yes dictation so i'm gonna move that down and all right let's see <clears throat> who we got in today cheese ah. let me have it all right hold on i had it in there who's still in all right so we have a blend puppet uh up yep Cassastros. cass yep stack who Ethan. who oh uh, dak oh uh, dak yep. <laughs> Ethan is Ethan in Evan's here. Hey. A uh, coop of Earl. Coop of Earl. Uh, fin Finsky. Is that Coop? Coop. Coop. Yeah. Oh, you're tricking me with these <laughs> fancy names. <laughs> coop, Finn. Yep. <laughs> Who else we got? Uh, kinder. Kinder. Yep. NFT architect. NFT. Yep. No thief. No, I'm not I'm saying that wrong. Am I saying that wrong? <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to spell it wrong, but it's he's staring me right in the face. Yep. No, <laughs> yeah. Rob. Rob. Yep. Shaq. Shaq. Joe. Joe. Umbrella. Umbrella. Yep. And Zoe. Zoe. Now we're sure. Now you didn't put yourself in there. You don't want to play? Yeah, sure. I'll play. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Anybody else that you're not on the board? Going once, going twice. All right, let's see who's going to go. So we have 10K for Joe. Oh, here we go. UP. Come on. <laughs> Nicely done. I, you know what? I'd like to thank everybody for making this possible today. I've never won anything in my life. This is amazing. Well, I don't think it's just yet. You haven't won anything just yet. You might end up with a shitty Ben. Thanks, NFL, Ben. So. <laughs> wow, <Well>, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> wow, well, Ben. All right, Chad. Well, you know, we keep it real, you know. We keep it real here on the new podcast. <laughs> he, he's like bubble burst. <laughs> I don't feel so good. <laughs> Do you know how this all works, UP? Yeah. All right. Let Cheese know when you want to spin. All right. And go. All right, what do we got? We got five chances on this wheel at 25K. Marty needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's close again. Oh, so close. Just ticked over. 1,000 up X upland puppet. Let, her, like to let bank it roll. Let, spin again, roll again. Let it roll. All right, now watch the screen. Tell me when. <laughs> I've got to get by. <laughs> and now. 
Oh, Where's I'm Marty? Trying. Where's Marty? He's gonna give you three. <laughs> three <laughs> chances. Three chances at fifty k on this wheel. Come on. <laughs> oh, we've dropped down to five hundred. Oh, oh. five hundred upex. All right. You, you know, know that's that's a decent treasure. You look, if you did a treasure hunt and you got five hundred, you'd be happy with that. <laughs> I am. So what are One we more. Do? You want One more. Oh, right, he's go. going for it. Ooh. Let's do it. <laughs> And like I said in last week's show, I do have two million in his grow with cheese. So yeah, the one million, if it doesn't go off beforehand, it will definitely be going off. Well, at the end of the year. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you did get twenty-five cents more than before. Woo! And you upscaled. Now, just awesome. remind me again, what's your in-game name? It is Land Grab Twenty-Three. Land Grab Twenty-Three. I, I think it might be is it nft architect every week that you win i almost send it to the wrong person all the time i have to double check my dms thank you guys very much you're very uh, welcome this is fun kind is asking who won who won you didn't even ask him to say that don't forgive don't forget i oh, was yeah. i was there re- waiting to press send oh. to give him the answer anyway so <laughs> well, that's why i put that caveat in the end in the end of the show so. thank, thank you guys for the congratulations in the chat no worries all Aww. right just to wrap up a reminder that to go in the running for the one million up x wheels you should be in the zoom at the start of the show for the snapshot if jazzy jazz is around you need to be paying attention in the middle of the show to catch a code word or phrase if i actually remember to do it and the most important thing is you need to be here at the end when the wheels start rolling If you have an Upland NFT or Metaverse product, service, or event to promote, opportunities are available for sponsorship and engagement in the UDU podcast. We are extremely, extremely um, cheap. I do know that because I've (laughs) I've actually sourced some sponsorship for the Samurai Aquatics with some other YouTubers, and I was like, oh, wow, that's what you're charging. Okay. So, yeah, we're now... (laughs) We just do it as a way to help the community, basically. I think our entry-level price is 5K, which is 10X cheaper than what I've been seeing out there. So, yeah, if that's something that interests you, contact myself or more cheese to discuss and secure your spots. All proceeds go towards giveaways and prizes on the podcast. And, yeah, otherwise we're going to keep spamming our Samurai Critics ad. Now, cheese does have a little bit of homework, so I can start spamming the proper full-length ad. I'll... <sighs> I do that right. I'll do that today. Yeah. I'll... And we could put it in here. We could put it in this one. Oh, you'd have to be lickety split fast, but we'll see how we go. I am lickety split fast. All right. Awesome. That, that'd be good. So there you go. You, you might have caught it on the front end. We'll see how we go. So like and subscribe, rate and review, sprick and spam, all that good stuff. Cheese, you know what to do. Stay fresh, cheese bag. Cheese.